Marija, Marija, otvori na Facebook. Otvori na Facebook. Ok, you are live. Good evening, good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm really happy that tonight we have the opportunity to uh, follow the lecture of Thomas Hirschen in the frames of the project uh, Places of Generosity Transformative Station. Uh, Thomas Hirschen is widely regarded as a leading artist of his generation. He uses everyday and found materials such as plastic sheeting, cardboard, aluminum, pa uh, packaging tape and magazine images to create a dystopian reality. The process of making remains visible and becomes a metaphor the, for the individual and collective struggle to establish democracy. Implicated uh, in Hirschhorn's work, viewers are obliged to consume and reflect upon the uh, disparity between the viewer and the bo bombardment uh, of blow up imagery remain us to how distant and removed we can feel when confronted with this imagery. Hirschen recently opened a solo show at Max in Rome in October 2001. He also transformed recently the gallery of uh, GL Strand in Copenhagen uh, in March 2001 with a labyrinth site-specific work titled Community of Fragments. Other not notable uh, solo projects include In Between, in the Gallery uh, South London in 2015, the Gramsci Monument, a major public installation presented in 2013 by DR Foundation at New York City Housing Authority Development in Bronx, New York. Uh, Hirschhorn has... Uh, 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 is a recipient of uh, many awards, including the Eight Kurzschwitters Award uh, at Springer Museum in Hanover in 2011, uh, Marcel Duchamp uh, Prize in 2000, uh, and Joseph uh, Boyce Prize in 2004. He, he has taken part in many international exhibitions, including uh, the trainial at the Palais de Tokyo in Paris. Uh, he has been representative of Switzerland uh, uh, in 2011 with his uh, project uh, named Crystal of Resistance. Uh, also uh, uh, the exhibition Heart of Darkness at the Walker Art Center in 2006, Documenta 11 in Castle and many, many, many more. Um, his work are included in prominent collections internationally, including Musée d'International de d'Art Moderne in Paris, Kunstmuseum Museum in Basel, Pinacothèque de Moderne in Munich, Museum of Modern Art in New York, Philadelphia Museum of Art, Tate Modern, etc., etc. Thomas, thank you for accepting uh, the invitation to give your lecture. I'm really, really happy and honored to have you tonight. I just want to, to share with the public that in, uh, in this last year, this is our already second col collaboration because last year uh, you kindly uh, <clears throat> uh, supported, us, supported us with text contribution for the uh, uh, publication of of the project of Christina Bozurska homework. So thank you, thank you again. The floor is yours. Thank you, George. Thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be with you. I was not too far away once. I was in Pristina, where I exhibited in the National Gallery there my pixel collage work. But um, um, yes, I was not further south. So today I call my lecture Why Precariousness is the Future. And I try to, to show you pictures of my work. Why? Because I'm an, I'm an artist. I'm not a theoretician. I do work of art and I want to share 
uh, the question or the affirmation why precariousness is the future with uh, my work with you. So I just try to make uh, make work here the 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 dia, the, the, the dia setting. Sorry. Hmm. Okay, uh, precariousness, it's uh, the term I really love. And if we speak about precariousness, I want to share with you a citation of Giorgio Agamben. Precarious refers to what is obtained by means of a prayer and is for these fragile and adventurous literature and here i put art myself inside art or literature is itself adventurous and precarious if is which is to preserve the right relation with the mystery i think to me this is the most beautiful and powerful citation or definition of precarious I found and I love it. And you know, uh, just to be clear, what is precarious is not ephemeral because the logic of the precare is life and the logic of the ephemeral is dead. Therefore, I always make the distinction between ephemeral and precarious. And my work wants to be precarious. So I will share with you four works, four works with you. There is the Gramsci monument, George already mentioned, uh, pictures of a work I did uh, in Paris, in Palais de Tokyo, Flamme Eternelle, pictures I made with a work in public space in Wiesbaden in Germany, 2016, and pictures we, uh, we uh, a work I did uh, in three years ago in Switzerland. So my lecture will be illustrated by these four works. So the precarious is so important and I believe it can be the future because it is facing always the question of reality. So these questions can be, for example, I am able to build a relation or can I create an event with my work or I am, uh, I, uh, uh, I am able to do an experience and also can I provoke encounters there these four questions are to me the questions um, to reality relation event experience and encounter and i want to just to illustrate what i mean with relation um, this person is called beside me is called eric farmer eric farmer is somebody i met when i made the gramsci monument in 2013. I met him uh, after a lot of field works. Um, I went to 44 public housings in New York City to found uh, to try. I tried to find somebody which could help me to do the Gramsci monument. And after 44 different uh, uh, meetings with other people, I met this person, Eric Farmer. And he told me, Thomas, I will help you to do the Gramsci monument. And therefore, the Gramsci monument, where for 
oldest houses in the Bronx because I met this person who understood that I, as an artist, have not to work for his community, but I have to work for art. And therefore, we enter into this relationship. It was a beautiful relationship because Eric, which by the way was the president of the um, of the of the residence in forest houses, he was always on the ground together with me. Eric also did for me constitute the team who the team of the residents with with them I constructed the Gramsci monument. Then Eric was initiative. He invited other persons uh, to open up discussions like here the Central Park Five problematic. And um, I was very grateful that he was so implicated. Then Eric was all the time on the ground also during the Gramsci monument after in uh, accompanying, in listening and in taking part uh, on the different events we created. And until the end, here a picture of the of the uh, differ way uh, action in the very end of the tombala we organized. He was always there. Why I tell this example of relation with Eric Farmer is because it is very constitutive to do a work in public space with persons that you don't know in, in the beginning, that you at one time, um, you have to find in a way somebody with a street credit we call it street credit, and also somebody who understand that the artist has uh, perhaps sometimes another project as the social worker, but there is a cooperation. And that was in case with Eric Farmer. So the other question is, can I create through my work an event? Of course, an event means these are pictures now of the work um, um, Flamme Eternel at Par uh, Paris, uh, Palais de Tokyo, 2014. Are people coming? Do, can I propose something who has an impact? A philosophical lecture, for example. Can I create a space where relations between people are possible? Can we do a space where uh, where there is time, where there is time to meet, where is the time to, um, to discuss. Uh, can I create a space where there is material uh, in order uh, to give um, the envy to the people to implicate, to work with it? Then can I create an event in order to make a space where in a way people get active and also creative? That's the challenge. Can I do a space where, um, where something happened unexpected, of course, and also something where the will and the creativity of the, of the person uh, is, um, is taking, taking over? Yes, so that's the challenge. And therefore, it is so important um, to think about to create an event. Then, can I do an experience? Am I able to do an experience? Here, I want to share it with this example I did, Sperr in 2016, in the city of Wiesbaden in Germany. So this work was outside. Here we see uh, the letters on some elements. Wirklichkeit means the real, the real, the real. Um, um, I made here um, an, an unexpected experience. So um, all of the items have um, um, a letter in order to give a form to the term Wirklichkeit or the real. And two of the letters were with people who are sitting there with masks, white masks, and they didn't move. So the E and the I were the people. So me too, I was one of this person. We had for 10 days, uh, every two hours we changed, we changed and every two hours somebody else came 
I found some residents of Wiesbaden who helped me to constitute the, the team. But myself, I was part of this team with the white mask. So what happened? To Wiesbaden, find the space. I was there in the winter time, and uh, there was not a lot of people hanging around in the winter time. I thought it was an interesting spot because between the city center and already a little bit <laughs> more outside. So I found, <laughs> I found it's an interesting uh, mo uh, uh, moment. And when I came in the summer to do my work, it, I think it was in the springtime or almost in the summer, on the bench there, there was a lot of people hanging around, which I can say consumed a lot of alcohol. I didn't know it. I didn't expect it. And I just was with my work in front of them in a way. So um, it was quite a very difficult in the beginning experience because it's their space. And I was just uh, a few, uh, a few uh, space away of this. So after, um, but I wanted to do it there because there was no other possibility to me in a way. And then um, 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 with a lot of conversations and a lot of uh, trying, try to explain my idea and why it is there more and more um, um, with some conflicts um, and with some misunderstanding. Um, the people were always are there on these benches, the people who are consuming a lot of drugs and also a lot of alcohol, they told it to me, therefore I can share it to you. Um, went completely implicated into this project. So therefore, this was a, a very, in the beginning, harsh, difficult, but then also a beautiful experience. So then the question is, can I create or can I provoke encounters? That's another uh, big issue, I think. So there is another example. Uh, this person is called Malik. This is about the project my last big project in public space, I mean, the Robert Walzer sculpture in Biel, Bien, in Switzerland. So when I decided to do the work on the play, it was in front of the station, the main station of the city, I remarked there is a person always there. He, his, this person was Malik. And then uh, this is a picture of the first day. Um, uh, where we, we started to build um, uh, the structure for the Robert Walzer. So um, Malik did hug me so strong because he has so a lot of forces that I did knew this will be <laughs> a very tough experience. And of course, it was a very tough experience because uh, Malik he loved, he, that's his space there. He's always there, almost day and night. And he loved the microphone because we had a lot of microphone because we were talking, reading, 12 hours reading, etc. A lot of things that are related to Robert Walzer. And uh, the very creative and very stylish Malik wanted always to speak to the microphone. Even when I invite the people who try to uh, enlighten us about Robert Walzer and his life and his work, Malik came and interrupted and uh, struggled. So it was a difficult time to me um, to, in order uh, to find a solution, how not of course exclude him, but how to implicate him. So I found then uh, the solution to invite him every day for one hour. He had the microphone. And then what he did, he invited often me, myself, and make uh, for me a, a very interesting, powerful, funny uh, conversation between him and me. So this was an encounter I don't want uh, to miss. So to me, there are some conditions, I think, for this kind of precarious um, 
and devour and this kind of precarious um, precarious work I love to do and I want to do. So these um, conditions are presence and production. That means me, the artist is present and he or she is working and producing. The second is non-programmation, non-programming. The, the third, of course, openness to uncertainty. And the fourth, public space. So I want to go a little bit into this four again with the examples of my work. Again, presence and production. You know, I found that one time in my work that me, if I want the people are coming, if I want people are participating, if I want people are implicated, I must show first that I'm implicated. So therefore, I invented the terms of presence and production, which means the, the artist himself or herself is present all the time there on the spot. And therefore, now I want to show that, for example, the Gramsci monument, I was there all the time for the beginning in the preparation. Then I was there, of course, for then I was there doing the running in the web coffee. I was there on take part at the radio station. I was there at the bar. I was there in the library. And of course, I took part of uh, and, and I was interested to, to listen to lectures or whatever and organizing them and also the events, the neighborhood uh, organized. I was there all the time and also because I was there, I could also do my own workshop. This is a workshop I gave energy. Yes, quality. No, once a week. And of course, uh, which is beautiful when you are yourself uh, present and, per and present and producing other people from the neighborhood, like Miss Faye and Mrs. Jenkins. They came all also every day to the Gramsci monument. This is beautiful because they understood that, of course, if I'm there, uh, they also should be there or can be there. And of course, it's as always, there was a, in the Gramsci monument, um, there was Mrs. Faye, Miss Faye, uh, Mrs. Jenkins, there was Marcella and uh, Miss Farmer, the hardcore in a way of the Gramsci monument. It's very simple, very clear. It's the people, the hardcore is the people who are always on the ground and there. And therefore, it is so important uh, to me uh, to follow this idea of presence and uh, production. Then, of course, there are always some moments of grace. And uh, some of them I want to explain you. This is my friend Markus Steinweg, the philosopher from Berlin, because he was there every day also in the Gramsci monument. I invited him to come and every day he made a philosophical lecture, not about Gramsci, but about thematics, whatever he decided. And once he made a philosophical lecture about, about God, about religion, and the title what was God is dead after Nietzsche. So, of course, this was quite uh, a big, a big, um, a big uh, challenge for a lot of people of the neighborhood in the South Bronx. And um, uh, they, uh, they came to the lecture from Marcus and also asked him then in the end, but how Marcus do and tell us that God is dead to us who uh, are believing God and needs to go to the church and needs to be encouraged by by God and by the belief and it was is a, why it was a graceful moment which I could assist because Marcus explained that he if he is a philosopher he cannot think with this dimension of God. He must be completely free without everything in order to think freely. And uh, what is the moment of grace is that the people from the neighborhood, Tom, we understand, we understand this. And of course, uh, we, we will continue to come as we will continue to come to go to the church. Then uh, some other condition. I think it is a good condition to create 
or to, in, uh, to get in contact with precariousness in an active way. It's the so-called non-programming. Programming. It's a term I created. What means it? It means here the picture of the work at Palito Tokyo. The Palito Tokyo work was open 12 hours a day, like it is, 12 from, from 12 to 12 normally, but there was no program. So I didn't say at this, at this time, there is this and this. There was no program, therefore no programming. So people came and sometimes a lot of people came and sometimes uh, something happened. So there was a speaker, there was somebody make a, made a lecture or a discussion. But often also, because non-programming, there was nobody there or only a few people because there was no programming. We didn't announce who is coming. And this is non-programming because it's about this to hold out that there is nobody there, not to organize the people. It's just do it. I mean, myself, I was always there because I was always in presence and production project, but there was no program. And it's about to hold out that sometimes a lot of people are there and sometimes, often, by the way, nobody is there or very few people are there. And what happened with non-programming? Something positive to me that because there is no program, people, and it's not the first time I remarked, people are sleeping, are giving their time in the work and sleeping and, and just uh, being there. And that's the beautiful uh, outcome of uh, non-programming and the precariousness of it. Or other thing happened, we made a, a kind of video lounge. There was videos I chose with a friend of mine, some videos I liked, and people could then um, uh, themselves uh, um, look to the videos. And uh, what happened is, uh, a woman came almost every day. Her name is Toko. She came. I didn't invite her specially. It's open. I mean, the work was free, open for everybody at Palito Tokyo. And she came almost every day and looking to videos that she was interested to look. You know, when there is no programming, uh, something of, the, of uh, unexpected, it can happen and also some moments of grace i call moments of grace for example this was the corner where also in the work uh flamme Ternel, all day 12 hours somebody was reading uh reading texts he's the central person sometimes people came and was listening and and this is the moment of grace somebody other people unexpected came and asked can we read something and something completely unexpected to me that somebody comes wants to come and with the microphone uh, read something so therefore that was a moment of grace also uh, only possible i think because the condition of non-programming was uh, was proposed then of course uh, the uncertainty the uncertainty is very important and of course in public space uh, all work um, is always some i want to share some explain uh, some some pictures of of this work work sper mr tiger sper with this word the real in um, in in um, wiesbaden uh, it was about of course um, the idea was uh, to uh, to um, offer a kind of a presence with these two persons with the a and the e but then of course other people took part and um, and uh, inter and uh, make interventions the idea was the formal idea was uh, making a bulky waste um, uh, like i like them on the street when i see a bulky waste uh, um, sculpture, uh, but with the two persons, then uh, I, I, I try to um, to give them a kind of mysterious, but also uncanny uh, presence. 
And then what happened was, and that's why I show it to you uh, in this uncertainty, I wanted that it's not clear is this made by the artist or is this made by people who added something or who eventually took away something and uh, therefore or in a way um, uh, worked around uh, this sculpture spare or even um, uh, put down uh, uh, signs like the question is this art or whatever so th that's important um, to me that these moments of uncertainty are also moments who perhaps some moments create moments of grace because then for example the uh, the neighbors our neighbors um, at this place uh, they wanted to be implicated and they wanted to have their own their own letter on their t-shirts which of course we were happy to do or also they wanted also having our mask and to wear them in be in, in trying to be part of uh, the artwork so then another condition uh, for me is the public space the understanding of public space this is something very important to me because i believe the public space is more and more under pressure and more and more it gets privatized. For example, in city of London, in the city of London, there are not more a lot of public spaces. There are even parks are now privatized and somebody takes care of them. And this is a danger. And I think it's very important to fight uh, for the public space. So um, I want to illustrate it with some picture of this last work I did uh, in public space, uh, the Robert Walzer sculpture. Where is in the front of the station in in um, in Biel, Bien? Uh, you know, I choose this location because in front of the station, uh, often it's what we can call a real public space with a lot of people going out, going in, and also some people who are sometimes a little bit lost or who are who don't know where to go uh, are attracted by the situation of the station and it is very important of course as an artist which chooses the, the place in front of the station to never 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 exclude anybody from the place of course because it's a public space and the public space belongs not to me not also to the others belong to all of us so it is important that we found a cooperation between the different people who are in uh, the public space, the funny people, the crazy people, the people who are coming um, uh, with their own ideas and also with their uh, idea of manifestation of the space uh, which belongs, in fact, to everybody. It's a space also for conflict. It's a space for friendship. It's a space for dialogue and for confrontation. And therefore, it's for me a very, very important place. The public space has to be absolutely preserved from being uh, privatized. So also in the project, um, uh, the Robert Walzer sculpture, there were moments of grace, how I, I can I tell it. This was a moment of grace. The, I told you already about Malik, Malik, the person who lives in this space. Where is the moment of grace? At one point during the 77 days of the, uh, of the Robert Walzer sculpture, uh, somebody gave a lecture about Robert Walzer and about the book, The Walks, the, the Spaziergang, The Walk of Robert Walzer. And in this book, there is a beautiful description of Malik. I thought it is kind of monster who Robert Walzer described as Tom Suck. And to read, to read this beautiful sentence about Tom Suck, the man who is um, alone, the person who is, uh, has no friends, the person who uh, is, um, is making, uh, giving sometimes a hard time to the others, was so touching and I I was thinking this it is it's like a moment of grace that we have at 
the Robert Walser sculpture, our own Tom Schuck. And other moments of grace happened at the, at the Gramsci monument. This is a, a citizen, uh, Gabriela Pereira, which uh, is a citizen of Bill Bien, which I did not know uh, before the monument. But when she saw us constructing it, she was present. She came present, observing us. And when she uh, understood that there is a possibility to use the space from her own initiative, she was not the only one, uh, from her own initiative, she came almost every day and produced her texts, her writings, and her engagement as a woman, as an artist, and as a writer, and as a victim of an unjust Swiss system. It was a beautiful, uh, graceful moment that only could arise with this kind of uncertainty, with this kind of precariousness, and of course, in uh, the public space. So the term of grace, I did use it for my work several years. I call it moments of grace. I wanted to share with you four of them, four moments of grace. There are other ones, there are few moments, but you know, they happened. I call them, I call them moments of grace. But there is a fantastic philosopher, Simone Weil. She wrote this beautiful book and other books, but the book Schwerkraft und Gnade means um, um, grace and gravity. And she theorized um, what she means with grace. And I want to share only two, for me, beautiful, um, beautiful citations and definition of grace. Grace fills empty spaces, but it can only enter where there is a void to receive it. And it is grace itself which makes this void. You know, this is so, this was, when I wrote this, it was so touching to me because yes, grace can only happen when you, you are lost in a way. You're lost, you, you didn't expect, you didn't program it, you didn't think about, you could not organize it. But you gave everything you could, and then you were lost. And then sometimes moments of grace, how I call it, came. And this so beautiful sentence I wanted to share with you. And there is another one. The imagination is continually at work, filling up all fissures through which grace made pass which means we have to keep these fissures. We have not to fill them. We have to keep the fissures. We have to keep the precarious, the uncanny, the uncertainty. We have to keep them. And then maybe, maybe moments of grace and grace can happen. So this is, to me, beautiful, uh, the beautiful sent uh, sentences and the, and the citation and also as an artist who often in his work is lost and feel there is a lack inside or there is something which doesn't work um, it's hopeful to think on this beautiful sentence of Simone and I. So this is um, what I wanted to share with you and um, so now I'm I'm happy if I can respond on some questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. The participants are in the other room and you couldn't hear because uh, the camera there is muted. There was a applause. <laughs> <laughs> so well. thank you a lot. I, I really enjoyed especially because I really, really appreciate, really like your your work. I have many questions, but maybe let's uh, see if there is some question from the participants who are attending our workshop. So my colleague, uh, Georgi will help me. And also for those who are watching live on Facebook, they can ask their questions on the live chat. Thank you. 
So, Georgi. Any question? Georgia, you can go ahead if you have any. Okay, they're a little bit shady. Okay, uh, I mean, I, I have really a lot of questions, but for example, uh, uh, even though I can imagine that the, it was not a conscious uh, uh, decision, but at one point uh, you decided to work on this type of, of work. Uh, because I follow your work, I know at the, at the early stage you've been working on collages, but collages are also visible here. You're using this method of collage uh, in, 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 in this kind of work that you presented. But what was the point when you, you, you decided to move in, 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 in uh, this kind of uh, projects with, which also mean involving people, communities? Yeah, so the first um, decision was when I started to do my artwork, when I started to work as artist, first of all, I decided to exhibit my work. So I decided to exhibit wherever I can. So that means in art spaces, in museums, if ever I get invited, in private commercial galleries, if ever I found one, and in public space. So that was a decision when I started to put my work, collage work, in the art field of art. That was the decision. So always also to work in public space. So I made so far 73 works in public space. Of course, the, uh, the Robert Walzer sculpture was my one of my biggest, but I started with very modest, uh, even sometimes with work in public space, nobody saw, you know, I abandoned work on the street, I made a photo, whatever. So that's important to me. Important is that I started not only to do work in, for a museum or in a museum or in a gallery or in an art space, but also in public space. And it, I think it was a very good decision. Because I thought the public space is, uh, gives other challenges. Uh, it's different. The, the people are not the, the same people, but in different proportions. In the museum or in a private gallery, commercial gallery, there are perhaps 99% of the people interested in art. But in public space, there are perhaps 99% of people not interested in art. So it's the same people, but just another another um, um, another dimension or another in another relation so therefore that was a good decision but then i must admit of course in the beginning my work in public space was very shy very small and but then i developed and i of course parallelly with my other work who developed i wanted to be more to challenge it more and more and then i made errors i made errors and and uh, I experienced difficult experience and and so on and then I wanted uh, to go more close to what I can to implicate people directly and therefore I developed my work until the the moment I told them as uh, um, presence and production etc etc but for example presence and production which is my term you can also do it in an institution. I made already a few of them. For example, I once I told you, Flamme Eternelle. I made another one, Swiss Swiss Democracy, for example, 2004 here in the in the Centre Culturel Suisse. So uh, it is very enriching to me to work in public space with people, but also then to do a work in a gallery or art space or in a museum. Yeah, and you've been you've been made this uh, kind of monument dedicated to uh, or uh, not de uh, 
dedicated, but also connected with uh, different philosophers and, 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 and writers. And are you planning to continue working on, on, on this monument still, or you think you, you somehow made a circle, complete circle or? Yeah, I made a circle. <laughs> I made the circle. Um, I mean, I will continue to work in public space for sure. But in all the work in public space, the monument series, I decided since the beginning, there will be only four. There will be one for Spinoza, that was my first one, and one for Deleuze, one for Bataille, and one for Gramsci. And that's it. That's the circle. Why and why I wanted to do it. Look, this is what I call my form and force field. That means I decided that my work always has to touch love, politics, aesthetics, and philosophy. That was a decision, not equally, but it has to be here or here. So that was important to me. That's my field. And always when I do a work, not only in public space, I ask myself, does it touch all of them? Okay. And then I found out that uh, to me, uh, Spinoza is on the edge between pure love of philosophy to me. Uh, that's only to me. Then I found out uh, Gramsci is on the pure edge of love for politics. And therefore, I wanted to do the Gramsci monument. To me, Bataille, with his interest in the surrealists and also his interest in, in the erotism and all questions about what we can look at is to me and the politics of it with the question of uh, the potlatch or the question of expenditure is to me on the edge between politics, economy and aesthetics. Therefore, Bataille, and of course, <laughs> Gilles Deleuze, with as philosopher is, which is very important to me as philosopher, on the edge between philosophy and the question of aesthetic. Because, for example, his book, Mille Plateaux, Thousand Plateaux, is uh, uh, so uh, uh, like a toolbox for an artist, I think. And therefore, I decided to do for these four. And there will be no other work, uh, monuments. There will be other works in public space, but no more in these called monuments. Therefore, for example, the Robert Walzer sculpture, I call it not monument. It could be, but I call it sculpture, Robert Walzer sculpture. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you. Uh, in the meantime, do we have some questions from the participants, Gergi? If you have questions, how to ask? Well, there are... No, no, you, you can okay. Yes. okay. Uh, we have one. Yeah, and you can turn uh, the camera on, please. It's pretty dark, but you can type. No, no, you can you can see it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hello. We can we can hear you, Dragon. Yeah, uh, mm, it was really beautiful, uh, not presentation, but pure inspiration and provocation for us here in Skopje. And uh, just one question, once you step out from your installation and action, do, participant, do participants continue with such kind of events or initiatives or protests? or any kind of, uh, let's say, interventions in public space. What, what is the trace, the real trace of, of these uh, monuments which you mentioned? OK, first of all, um, the real trace is the experience with it, the intensity of the experience with it. That's the real trace. That's what is sustainable the experience, it's very important to me. It's not the object character, it's not the material, it's the intensity of the moment we spend together. And they can, I know, I'm not an accountant of it, they can change lives, I believe, because art can change lives, like it did for me. 
So my work, and therefore is so important that it's precarious, time limited. All my, for, I, I taught before to Georgia, I made 20, 73 works in public school. All of them are time limited because I believe and it's my work, my problem, my mission to create such strong and such um, dense moments of intensity that these moments are lasting. That's the trace, the remember of these moments. And of course, I have contact, for example, with Malik. I have contact with Eric. I have contact with Gabriela, for example, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But of course, then everybody has also with this experience to reach and to to struggle and perhaps to transform it. This would be great. And also, um, they do they do it partially. Yes, they do it. Sometimes not. Sometimes yes. But uh, it's like uh, I see the trace the importance of the intensity of the moment. Look, it's very simple. If you fell in love, for example, in your life, it's a very intense moment, which sometimes you don't forget the whole life. And uh, I must create these conditions. They must be at the moment and not the materiality, not the object is the sustainable. The sustainable is the intensity. Yes, yeah, thank you a lot, because it, it, it was very important to mention also in our workshop, which we are uh, still continuing to do. Uh, and uh, also we have some doubts about are we going to, uh, to share our um, inner experience with some other small societies here in Skopje. But yes, of course, uh, as you mentioned, it's really crucially important that experience and this kind of sharing is very important so thank you a lot you really inspired us and uh, keep uh, fighting we are thank you supporting your i have i have thank <laughs> you thank you very much yeah in the and then why you're using this uh, uh, everyday materials uh, uh, this uh, follows the the previous you said all this about the experience because temporality of the of the materials okay my, i i use these materials because yes they are they are this they're surrounding me there are uh, not specific arty materials there are uh, materials that everybody knows and uses there are i call them non intimidating Yes, and also there are materials that have no plus value, plus value. Yeah. So therefore I'm working with these materials. And it's important to me, especially in public space, to, to show and to prove to people. And therefore that's an advantage to say, look, I had an exhibition in this museum and I worked also with cardboard. But now I'm in public space and it's not because in public space I work not with cardboard, you know, that's or with cardboard. That's important. So people can understand that the material, that's a decision for something. Uh, you have not to agree with it. Of course, nobody has to love this, my material, but I, I love them and I work with them. I decided with them, therefore, and this is I keep the some people found perhaps it's annoying always the same material but uh, because I am I decided for it so I cannot change it yeah of course and then in different works you're using in a different ways just uh, yeah it also there there is a need of continuity of working with this yeah uh, I don't know do we have some other questions from the public there in the other space while we are waiting can you tell me uh, sorry Gergi, do we have no no uh -huh. what on what you're working uh, thomas now we mentioned that uh, two two weeks ago you closed the exhibition of another uh, long-term uh, cycle of pixel collages and in max in rome you exhibited uh, all collages that you made until now and what's new? What's next? 
the big question from Skopje, what's next? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so next. <laughs> um, so I'm working on a, an exhibition in my gallery. Um, I mean, the gallery represents me in New York, it's called Gladstone Gallery. And I try, uh, no, I, this will be in October, so I'm very happy to be a little bit in my studio and to figure out um, um, a new work I do. It is inspired by uh, the metaverse, but of course I will not do a metaverse, but more by the thinking of metaverse, this dystopian, utopian thinking of metaverse, and also by um, something... I, it will be in October. In so October. I in October. Uh, and also something I am interested is I saw uh, the Silicon Valley in the Silicon Valley in in California. Uh, they have this kind of uh, a motif or I don't know this sentence called fake it until you make it. <laughs> and I think uh, this is, of course, crazy, but also that's something I am interested in. So um, I try to do a work. I fake myself. No, I mean, it's cardboard, you know, it's cardboard. It's a, uh, and uh, I hope also that I make it with cardboard, you know. So I try in with this dimension, fake it until make it. And uh, with this idea of metaverse, but not in not in um, not in a in a concrete way, but more in the way that yes, it must touch all our senses. That's the question. To all our senses, we must be touched by all of them. I try to give find a form for this exhibition, which will be in a, in a great space which I already exhibited at Gladstone. So I'm happy to work on this now. And I have a lot of exhibitions to, uh, to uh, accompany, not new works. For example, one in Athens, in Athens, which is not too far away. I mean, yeah. Uh, it's in the Neon Foundation. It's uh, open, I think, in May or June. And it's called Caveman Man, but an old work of mine. Uh, uh, I think it's uh, tw almost 20 years, 19 years, but I work also a lot in order, it's a big work, so in order to, to install them there, it belongs to a, a Greek uh, foundation, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Uh, well, let me check if there's some question here. Okay, nothing in the chat. If, uh, there is no question from the audience present at Yadra. So we can shortly finish. Yeah, there's no. Okay, Thomas, thank you. Thank you once again for, for doing this uh, lecture. I really enjoyed it and I uh, learned uh, some new things about your practice and uh, i really liked uh, the the the, <clears throat> the presentation in terms of presenting your processes while you are doing uh, uh, your 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 works and yeah i really hope that in near future we will have the opportunity uh, to host you here in in skopje and maybe develop to uh, some 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 interesting idea here. Thank, thanks again. Thank you very much, George. I say goodbye to Skopje and uh, uh, yeah, why not? Why not yeah. uh, make a trip uh, to the south of Europe? Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thank Take, you care. Take, Take care. Take care. Work hard. Continue to fight. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. bye.